Your time trial bike is different to most people's time trial bikes. Even I, as a non-expert, <laughs> can see that. Um, what do you think are the most important features in a time trial bike um, that's going to be used for long events? What do you, what do you think that if you had to just pick pick a couple, two or three main features, what would you say were the um, crucial things? Aerodynamics for any t time trialing bike of any sort, aerodynamics are by far the most important factor, and um, and ride position. I mean, both of those sort of blur into each other really, but. Uh, so you, your ride position's got to be air, a compromise between aerodynamics and power and comfort, especially as the events get longer. Mm, yeah. um, and the bike has to be designed to be as aerodynamically efficient as possible. You've, you've not been tempted to you know, go out and buy one of these um, super duper whiz bang, you know, all singing, all dancing, um, <laughs> you know, sort of sculptured uh, machines for time trialing. You, you've not been tempted to go down. Well, I love them. I mean, Jill, my wife, rides a, a Cervelo P3, absolutely beautiful bit of kit. You know, it's the classic time trial bike of the century, really. And um, and I, I love, I think they're great bits of kit. But uh, a bike that specific will only work for time trialing on and time trial training on. Uh, now, a lot of my cycling is done to and from work. I'm a building labourer, I work on a building site and I need to carry all my lunch and my gear with me every day, so panniers on. And I, need, I ride all year round in the winter, you know, so I need mud guards, I need lights. That, that mileage to and from work forms the basis of my training really and, and often when I'm racing I'll add on. My, my, on the way home I'll, I'll, I'll be doing you know, extra miles and, and extra training, um, different types of training. But it's all done, uh, tacked on to my ride to and from work. Now, if I was riding a specific time trial bike, I'd have to come, first of all, those direct miles to and from work, and it's usually somewhere around 30 miles a day, uh, would all have to be done on a different bike to the one that I'd be racing on. And, and if I was going to use the race bike at all, I'd have to come home from a training, from a ride from work, swap bikes and go out on my racing bike. Um, it just won't work. It, mm -hmm. you, it, it, cycling such a specific exercise um, that if you're riding anything other than the bike you're going to race on for training, I I regard it exactly as the same as doing if you're a swimmer, training with breaststroke and then racing with crawl. You know, it, it just doesn't work. You, cycling is millimeter specific. You know, every revolution of those pedals is identical. And uh, unless you're training your body to do exactly what you're going to do when you're racing, um, you, you're working below your maximum efficiency, really. So something I've always been aware of since I was a roadman is that I can't swap between bikes and hope to stay efficient. You know, if you ride two bikes regularly, you can reach a level of efficiency on both, which is quite acceptable, and people have proved that. But... Um, I couldn't ride too effectively, you know, it wouldn't work with my my lifestyle really. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't ride to work on a race bike because I couldn't carry on my kit, it wouldn't work. And if I wanted to ride a race bike as well as my ride to work bike, it would mean me coming home from work and swapping bikes and on a, on a nasty evening in the cold and wet in the winter. You know, once you get home, <laughs> even with the West Mill in the world, you wouldn't want to be going out again. So. Um, so for me, having one bike works perfectly, and uh, and that that is a entire philosophy behind me riding the kind of daft bike that people think it is. That's why I ride it because every time I'm riding it, whether it's whether I'm riding on a mountain bike route up in the Welsh mountains or on a club weekend with panniers on, or just riding to work or whatever, every time I'm riding that bike, I'm training to race basically. And if you're not riding the same bike that you're going to race. You just train to go on a pub run. Right, so, right. Have you ever been tempted to you know, borrow one of these sorts of bikes and have a go on it and just see whether it made any difference? Or? Well, you couldn't tell because no. unless you've ridden that bike for six months, yeah. you're going to ride it way below your if you know, potential efficiency. So it wouldn't tell you anything really. No. Uh, almost certainly, I'd be awful. I've ridden Jules P3 just um, you know 
just for fun a bit just to see what it's like and it feels absolutely awful to me because mm. <laughs> it couldn't be more different to my bike everything about it is different to my bike and, and it just feels unsafe um, <laughs> but, you know, so no it's like um, I don't know it's like saying to someone who, who swims crawl you know have you ever thought of doing you know butterfly um, you know it would take them six months before they'd even do the stroke properly to tell whether they could even have any potential at the stroke. So it's just not, you know, it's not going to happen really now. <laughs> um, nature or nurture, that's a, a, a good one, isn't it? Um, natural ability must play, um, a, uh, has to play a big part in, well, maybe not, but I would think has to play a big part in the performance of a rider, particularly up at the very sort of high level. Um, so you've got natural ability and training. Where do you think the balance of uh, importance lies in uh, for, for a cyclist? I don't think, I mean, I don't for one minute believe that I was ever supremely talented. Uh, when I was younger, it was, I, was, I wasn't a child prodigy by any means, you know, and, and I think um, the very best champions are. I mean, Chris Bullman, I can, he's quite a few years younger than me, Chris, so I kind of had the chance to watch him come from being a you know a twelve year old uh, novice really to by the time he was fifteen being able to beat people you know professional riders um, he was just unbelievable talent right from a young age and I was never anything like that you know and and that will always limit my you know I couldn't do what Chris Borman did he, he he was he was a million steps ahead of me. Um, because he just had the physical capacity um, of, a, of, a, of a champion, you know, he had he had an amazing, he had a very compact body, a bit like, it was similar dimensions to mine really, uh, but he had a much bigger lung capacity, I mean, we've never, I've never had my lung capacity measured, but I wouldn't be surprised if his lung capacity was litres and litres bigger than mine, because his body shape here was slightly different, and it, it was, his body shape was made to incorporate massive lungs and, you know, I just physically couldn't do what he could do, and, uh, and that is a mark of a true champion. He was born with that ability to be a champion, and he, and he had the right mental approach to release all the potential that his body had. So that is a true champion. So and I think the potential for improvement in your average person, on in cycling in particular, but in probably in any sport, but, but, but in cycling in particular. The, the level the potential for improvement is absolutely massive you know far bigger than anyone ever and that's it irrespective of your age you know if you come into cycling age 40 and a bit overweight and think oh well i'll never be able to beat the hour for a 25 but you know I, but i just like being out on my bike I, I i pretty much guarantee with the right kind of guidance that someone like that could beat the hour you know easily given a few years of specific preparation um, yeah, the potential for improvement is it's massive, it's limitless, it really is. The human body is so trainable mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you should never ever put any uh, any um, limits as to what, what you can do because the human body, the potential for improvement in the human body is, is limitless, really. I think a lot of people will take great heart from that, that, it's, uh, you know, that, it, you know, that you feel that... Um people do have enormous enormous potential well, I really do I think I really do believe I believe far, people have far more potential than they ever imagined they have 